Time for the gambling group chat, NFL style. Excited. To, we've knocked a couple of these out now for college already, and there's been a lot of fun and a lot of information kicked around. The NFL starts this week. Well, actually, started Thursday night with the Chiefs Lions game, and we are once again joined by Chef Schwartz, who's here in studio, Sam Panianovich, and Will Hill. Uh, before we get into like week one game specifics and what we like week one, futures have been out there a long time. We've kicked around futures all off season in, in appearances and stuff that we've done all all around there. You got one future, anything, win total, player prop, award, uh, one, one or one or two things out there that still might be available that you guys like, Sammy? Well, I have more than one, so I'm going to whittle down my list here on the fly. Perfect. Um, Keep going. Well, as many, I, as, I many as you want. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, well, let me let me lay down like a therapy session and give you all my bets. Uh, I did bet <laughs> Herbert at 15 to 1 MVP. I thought that number was too high. It's it's gone, unfortunately. But here's a number you can still find. I was actually breezing through one of my outs the other day, and it was kind of like I was at the grocery store. Do I really need Cocoa Puffs? No. But Tyree Kill was 150 to 1. But I would like to Cocoa MVP. Puffs. I love Cocoa Puffs. I don't need Cocoa Puffs, and I don't need to bet Tyree You're Kill at 150 for Cocoa to 1. Puffs. <laughs> so I did put a little Tyreek in my pocket. Look, if he gets 1,900 receiving yards and 12 touchdowns and Miami finishes first in the East, it could happen. That's a lot of ifs there. But I do like Herbert and Hill. Hill, obviously, a long shot. And then I bet Ravens over 10 and a half wins plus money and Ravens to win the North at 5-2. to two. Yeah, look, as far as, you know, who's going to win the Super Bowl, that's a long way away. February's a long way away. I don't have a crystal ball. I have no idea who's going to win. All I know is the Jets play the Cowboys in week two, and they're going to have a rematch in the Super Bowl. 89-1, to one, the Jets versus the Cowboys. <laughs> Jets almost made the playoffs with the worst quarterback on God's green earth last year in Wilson. I, I just don't buy the idea that Rogers is shot and co I think the I, I think the Cowboys look, nobody wants to pick them because you always get burned picking the Cowboys, but I think they're dead even with Philly. And look, Philly had a really soft schedule last year. It's much harder this year. Starting in November, Philly has five games, uh, two against Dallas, the 49ers, at the Chiefs, and then the Bills on short rest. So uh, it might come down to this in the East. The Cowboys don't have to play the Chiefs. Philly has to play in Kansas City. Uh, if you win the division, obviously, you're in much better shape. Jets, Cowboys, and the Super Bowl, I have no idea who's going to win, though. I'm not, I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll make Bear happy. Jets by a field goal in the Super Bowl, but 89-1 is a good place. I, I, I have lived the misery forever. John Hall, the, the mud bowl in Miami. Uh, Vinny Testaverde, Steelers, ACL. Just, yeah, t t that, it was the, I can remember driving to, to the Meadowlands that, that day, being in the car, listening to Mike Francesa, talking about the coach, and this is the year, the coach, they're going to win the Super Bowl. And then first quarter, I think it was first quarter, or even thought it was early second quarter, Testaverde, Achilles done, season over. And I, I literally left the game early. I was so dejected. I was like, this is why you're 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 a Jets. But I'm 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 with you, brother, man. Like I normally am like the most pessimistic person when it comes to the Jets and uh, they're gonna stink, they'll find a way to screw it up. I am too excited about this year, which probably means it's going to end very badly. But I I like I like both of those calls by like I like Dallas like their defense is going to be really good now at the same time you want to back a team with Mike McCarthy and Brian Schottenheimer on the offensive side of the ball that that's the thing that could probably come back and bite you but yeah I, I I'm not high as on, on the Eagles this year as a lot of people are so I, I think San Francisco is the best team in the NFC, the best roster in the NFC. We'll see if Purdy can repeat. Bose is in there now, um, and, and we'll see if the offensive line plays out. Yeah, the, the couple of uh, futures that I, I played putting Johnson at, uh, to win Rookie of the Year, Offensive Rookie of the Year, got to be like 20 to 1. I don't know what the price is now. And, and I played the Browns season win total over 9.5. I got plus, plus 115 on that. So I am high on the Browns. I think they get some really fortunate scheduling as well. Uh, Biggest improvement in the offseason uh, in terms of coordinators, uh, Jim Schwartz coming in to coach a defense. I, I think as long as Deshaun Watson is not washed, I, I think the Browns have a really good roster and a really good chance to uh, – to, to, to compete in that division. I know Sammy likes the Ravens. I, I think it's more of a, is it maybe more of an anti-Bengals feel or is it just confident in the Ravens? Because it, it's a little bit of both. I mean, I'm confident in the Browns, but I think I think the Bengals are going to take, take a little bit of a step back as well. Yeah, and I think Jeff can maybe tee this one up too. I mean, the worst part about the Bengals team is the offensive line. That's that's clear to me, at least. And New we've safeties already seen too. Pro, 
For sure. But I mean, on the offensive side of the ball, their line is very weak. They have playmakers. Obviously, we know about Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. But when the quarterback's limping around already in August with a line that's basically patched together, that's not good big picture. I like their talent, but I don't like their protection. Brutal schedule for the Bengals, well, too. They have to play the Bills, the Chiefs, the 49ers, all those teams. None of those teams are easy in terms of the Steelers, the Ravens, the Browns. I mean, that's eight, nine tough games right off the bat there. I mean, uh, just as a side to enhance your point, Sammy, like under 11, under 11 and a half wins for Cincy, it's very hard with that schedule with a limp, to, you know, a quarterback limping around to get to 12 wins. I, I like under for Cincy as well. If we're saying the AFC guys, Jacksonville over nine and a half is my favorite win total of the year. It's, it's pretty juiced now. But when we look at the schedules, we have to look at quarterbacks teams are playing, right? It, it's, it's a good way to judge wins and losses. So, the, so Jacksonville has the Colts twice, the Titans twice, um, and they have the Texans twice, okay? So that's, that's rookie quarterbacks for four of those six games, maybe five of those six games, six of those six games, and the NFC South. So they have a Baker Mayfield, a Ritter, a Young, and a Derek Carr with maybe a, a baddish offense in New Orleans. Those are all games they're probably going to win. If they, even if they don't, they win eight of those games, and they have to win two more. Like, to me, Jacksonville over nine and a half is my favorite one of the year. My favorite prop of the year, by the way, it's kind of fun on the radar, I feel like. George Pickens at, 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 at Pittsburgh, his, his touchdown number was four and a half. He had four last season. He's going to get 10 to 12 touchdowns this season. I, I do not understand why the number was set so low. Uh, I even threw some money in him to, to lead the NFL in receiving. I think Pittsburgh this year and Kenny Pickett play really well and, and kind of get back to their winning ways, especially as a, as a playoff team. But to me, Pickett's over four and a half, hands down my favorite future prop, whatever you want to call it, um, of the NFL offseason. Get, get back to their winning ways. I mean, don't you know that – Mike Tomlin has never had a losing season as Pittsburgh Steelers head coach. Haven't you heard that anywhere before? They were in a playoff team last season. I think they get back to the playoffs this year. And they almost were. Things almost worked out for them the last week of the year for them to get into the playoffs. It was incredible. All right, you mentioned Jacksonville. This is a scary game week one. Like, I was ready to be a, like, like, I am not the biggest Anthony Richards, Richardson fan in the world. There's no Jonathan Taylor. But I absolutely know come Sunday – I'm going to have that Colts plus five ticket in my hand because I, I, I am a Massachusetts and I can't help but play bad sides and bad teams. No Cam Robinson on the offensive line. I have a little bit of concern about Jacksonville's defense. I think maybe Richardson first started just, just enough to kind of run around, keep them in there. It's a Colts team that was in some games last year, probably shouldn't have been, despite how bad they were last year. It would not surprise me to look up in the fourth quarter and see this. 24 20 Jacksonville Colts have the ball late with a chance bear bets full episodes drop twice a week right here on the bear bets YouTube channel remember to subscribe to stay ahead of the odds and let's celebrate all of our wins together